Hey everyone, welcome back to Indicted TV. I'm your host, Negra. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. Before we start, I gotta give a shout out to my sponsor, Royalty Honey. Keep it hard, guys, and if you wanna buy, make sure you use promo code NEGRA. Also, if you do not wanna be on my show and you wanna stay home, make sure you hire Attorney Rosenberg. That's right. <laughs> on today's episode, we have Ray. Welcome to Indicted TV, Ray. Thank you, thank you for having me. Of course, no, it's, it's an honor having you, you know. Yeah. Um, we're going to start. Tell me a little bit where you're, where you grew up, where you're from, not the gang, obviously, if you are or not, whatever, yeah. you know, all your brothers, sisters, how was the inside of your house, you know, growing uh, up? I grew up in Bassett. That's where I'm from. That's my, my barrio as well. Uh, Bassett, California, down the street right here in San, San Gabriel Valley. Like La Puente area, kind of. I prefer to say Bassett. Okay. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Man. You know, I'm sure they, they prefer to say La Puente, but yeah, I'm from Bassett and, um, I have no blood brothers, but we grew up in the same household, me and my cousin, so I, I call them brothers. Yes. And they're from the same neighborhood. And, uh, there was five of us and six sisters. And, uh, you know, same neighborhood kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Um, you had your mom All the tias, tias lived in the same house. and uh, you know. So you had a lot of people in your house growing up? A lot, a lot. In the 70s, that was natural. Though. I mean, yeah, that was a natural yeah. thing. You know, late 60s, early 70s, there were a lot of us in the house. It, that I think that's where the joke came in, you know, how many how many Mexicans come out of a 64 in Pala, you know? <laughs> yes. There's like 12 of us, you know? Yeah, you and know? then before, you didn't even have to wear a seatbelt, and you could have just right. stuffed everybody right. in, huh? That's right. And the cars were big, so everybody was going in there. If you that's fit, right. you fit. If you didn't, you ain't going, huh? I, I remember we had a Kingswood station wagon. That's those three-seaters. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were packed in there. Man. We were packed in there. But, yeah, that's that's where I grew up, yeah. Okay. Um, did you, um, how was like your school time? Like, were you like, did you finish elementary, junior high, high school? Um, no, I didn't finish high school. Um, I was obviously, um, well, not obviously, but I was in youth authority. So in there, you know, you just pretty much had to show so, up. And, uh, yeah, and go. Know. How many, well, what, how many times did you get in trouble or what did you get in trouble oh, for? Oh my God, we were, we were always in trouble. Were um, you like that ever since kindergarten, ever since elementary or how, when did that start? Um, well, I guess on a sad note, um, I didn't have a good relationship with my mom, so um, she was very uh, abusive, very promiscuous. There was things I seen as a little boy I shouldn't have seen, you know? So with that, I was constantly in and out of trouble. Uh, boys home, county camp, youth authority, two terms in prison, and my brothers were the same way. Okay. They were always in and out. Um, uh, jumping ahead, my... The brother ab above me, Peter, uh, he did 35 years straight. Oh. 35 years straight, but God, God is good. He got paroled Amen. two years ago, and uh, he's doing great. You know, good. He's doing great, well, let's yeah. get back to the beginning of, you know, what led you to your first time in juvenile, huh? Um, and how long did you do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Just a couple of days. Okay. Just a couple of days. Uh, we were just joyriding in a car, and we were out he there. He said he was just joyriding. Yeah, like, it was just like nothing. We were just nothing. having fun, man. Eh? Like, it was you know just know? nothing. But but back then, again, I mean, I know I'm a lot older than you. That was kind of like a natural thing. It seems like all of us as kids in the neighborhood were, oh, yeah, he's in juvenile hall. But two, three days, they let yeah. you out. Your yeah. parents go pick you up. FYI, my first time in juvenile hall was for a G-ride, too. There you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. And we get in a car. We borrowed the car, you know? Yeah. We had nothing, no intentions, of, but just to go for a just cruise. Just go for a cruise. Know? Central juvenile hall. How was that? How was your first time there? Your experience, because and tell us around what year was that? Because obviously the years say so much, like so that everybody could visualize it. Because it's so different. Yeah, yeah, it's real different. Uh, this was probably um, 74, 1974. Wow. I was like eleven or twelve. Wow. Yeah, we went to juvenile hall and um, just running amok out there. Was it like the American me vibes? Yeah. Exactly. It was all like fisticuffs that. back then, you know. And uh, first time I actually seen an enemy face to face, and that was like a shell shock. Because where I grew up, I, I mean, no disrespect to the East LA Vadios, those Vadios went to school with each other. Yeah. You know, but in the San Gabriel Valley, we all we all had our own city, and our own, own district. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't you wouldn't mingle with your enemies. So when you actually seen them face to face, it was usually in juvenile hall jail. You know. How was that little experience for um, you? Got them up right away. <laughs> Got him up right away, and uh, 
and it was just an ongoing thing for the the next two three days you know as you when you were there yeah yeah what would you um so you got you got out you would be in and out was there probation back then um not that i remember right i, I don't remember being on probation never I think it was like kind of like a new thing, probably then, huh? Probably, probably so. Not in the seventies, they didn't know about probation. Yeah, there was that I know of. There was. You just go there, get out. Yeah. Did you even go to? Was there go to court? Uh, yeah, we went to court. Okay. And they just pretty much don't do it again, you know. Yeah. That's all. And two days after, there you go again. Yeah, just back in the mix, you know. Ah. Yeah, my brothers were the same thing. Uh, My older brother Willie was already in youth authority at the time, and my brother Peter went to camp, so. I mean, back then it was a, you know, it was a street status, uh, credibility, you know, the older homeboys that came out of the joint, you know, you, they had that street credibility. So, you know, the, they had that respect. So it was almost like a natural thing for all of us just to follow the leader type mm-hmm. of thing. you know. Yeah. So what led you to the youth authority? Like, what did you do to actually get sent to YA? Uh, it was an armed robbery assault. We were on Whittier Boulevard and, um, we got in a fight with uh, with the other side, you know. I'll just say that, and um, and you know, just I don't know where the robbery came in. To be honest, we got in a fight, and I guess stuff was took in after when the cops came, and I went to youth authority. I got six years for that. Oh wow! Six years for that, yeah. Um, how did you feel like when they said? I felt like I accomplished something. It's you so- know, our mentality back then is like, you know, it's happening. My life. You know what it's, I mean? You, again, it's a it's a credibility thing. To me, the naive part of me was thinking I'm the first one from Bassett to go to YA because everybody was going straight to camp. And, um, you know, the, that was a wake-up call. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. That was a wake-up call because as soon as I got there, I seen homeboys, you know? You're all happy. Yeah. You didn't feel alone. I mean, probably your brother was there already, right? Yes, yes. But he was in YTS. I went to Nellis. I went okay. to Nellis. And... Um, well, how did you feel actually just walking in? You said you feel like you accomplished something, but like, um, was there any part of you where you felt like, oh man, it's kind of scary? No, I, you know what? Uh, now at, at older age, I'll, I'll be humble and um, I'm not, I don't want to glorify it. Of course. And, and to say that, yeah, it is. You, you don't realize how much my neighbor was hated or how many enemies we had until I arrived to Youth Authority. And you're super Mind you, we're, we're surrounded by five different barrios and they all didn't get along with us so when i mean at one time i was at yts it was like 30 i'm not exaggerating about 30 enemies on the yard and you had a fight with everybody they wanted to fight with me you know what i mean (laughs) but little it's funny it's funny you say that because as much as they wanted to fight with me it just made me look tougher yeah. Because I was fighting with everybody. So you were yeah. a super feed man, for sure. Yeah, and because I boxed, uh, me and my brothers grew up in the boxing gym. I was very confident with my hands. I uh, didn't win them all, though. You know, no. I can admit, I didn't win them all. But when I had went to the hole, I was constantly going to the hole, constantly going to the hole. And, and uh, the counselors were, um, that's what we called them back then, the counselors. They say, you're back in here, Popeye. You're back in here. You're fighting again, Popeye. So that's your name, Popeye. Yeah, Popeye. Is, is that your, did they give you that name because yeah. of the boxing? I don't know. I don't know how I got it, to be honest. But my brother started calling me that, so I just Kept ran with it, you know. It, yeah. And and as they were telling me, you know, you're in here fighting again. I realized, wow, I'm getting a reputation. But in all reality, they're coming at me. I'm mm-hmm. just defending, defending myself, yourself. you know. But as I'd walk out to the yard after getting out the hole, I noticed people were giving me respect, you know. But it was because we had so many enemies, you know. Wow. You know? So yeah. you were fighting every day, every single yeah. chance you had. Yeah. I mean, youth authority back then was stone fisticuffs, you know, and it was rough. What would you say was the worst thing you ex- you experienced while you were there? Uh, I always give him props and props to him. Danny Maya from Puente, he gave me a, just a stone ass whipping, you know, toe to toe, toe to toe. We went toe to toe. I, you know, beca- again, because I boxed, I must have hit him. God, with every combination I knew, and he just walked right through it, and he beat beat my ass. Man. He beat my ass, and it was a wake-up call, and um, I give him props, you know, And uh, but a funny story, um, this is like three, four months later, I'm in the chow hall, and one of his homeboys comes in, and is talking about, I'm going to beat your ass when I see you on trade line, I'm going to get you, 
And I'm telling him, hey, whatever. Right? You know, I've been fighting with all these guys all the time. And Danny walks in and he tells his homeboy, it was a double, it, it was like a compliment put down. He goes, hey, because I was chubby back then. He goes, hey, Holmes, that fat bot, be careful, that fat bot could fight, eh? So I'm like thinking to myself, I don't know if that was a compliment or a put down. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, it was yeah. a compliment, you know. Yeah. Being chubby is never a bad thing. That's right. That's you right. You know. Yeah. So that was a, <laughs> a funny story. But why it was rough? Why it was rough? Uh, in my opinion, it was rougher than prison because uh, you know you had a, it a took fight, webbles fight to fight. Lot, you know, fight a lot. Um, what would you say was the worst thing you saw there? Uh, I seen a couple of homeboys get jumped and uh, really got beat up real bad. And I figured my time was coming because, again, we were outnumbered. And um, it, it, it was it was hard. Uh, my cousin, uh, Big Flo, he passed away already. He got beat down in the in the trade line. and uh, they Trade put line in, means like when you're getting... Well, when you go during the day, you go to trade, whatever trade you picked. Oh, you know, okay, painting. as in like school, things yeah, like school. that. You got either it. went to school... You went to school or you went to trade, and he went to trade, and uh, he got jumped in there. And they beat him, beat him bad. bad. They sent him to the hospital, and I just figured my time's coming too, you know? Because, again, we were outnumbered, and uh, it, it, it was rough, you know? It was rough, you know? It took a, in my opinion, you had, you had to have heart to be in YA back then, especially yeah. when you went to YTS. Back then, YTS was considered the Pelican Bay of now, but in youth authority. Yes. You know, so they had all the fools there. You know, all the crazy ones. Yeah, the super down ones. That's right, the super <laughs> down ones. That's the way, that's the way I put it. You know. Yeah. So you did your whole six years there. No, I, I didn't do six years. I did four years, but that's what I got sentenced to. Okay. But no, I went to OH close up north, and then that that's another story there. The, the well, Northanios. Well, tell us that's tell us how was this on your four years? Yeah. Tell us about that experience. Um, you said you went where? What is it called again? OH Close. Okay. It was like a Nellis, but up north. Okay. And, um, you know, they, they sent us up there. They sent like 10 of us up there. But mind you, when we went there, we already knew we were going to deal with the Northanios, you know. And no disrespect to the Northanios. You know, they, they're their own set of people up there. Yeah, know? of course. Now that I'm older, I give them that. But um, we got there, man. <laughs> he said, now and that I'm older. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you get there and you figure, oh, we're going to be together. We'll be all right. They divided us all amongst the, oh, the units. wow. So I went by myself. Everybody went by themselves, and everybody was catching the blues. They knew and, exactly um, what they were doing. As soon as we got there, man, they, we were getting jumped all the time. And there was nothing that you could do about it. What could it? you do? I mean, I'm not going to say no names, but a couple of the Southsiders locked it up. I, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Did it cross my mind, you know, not locking it up, but like, man, I we, go do I got to go to the yard today? You know what I mean? Because you were getting it from every angle, from the weak Norteños, we're, we're trying to start fights with you. And Especially because you were by, you're yeah, by yourself. Yeah, you're by yourself. And they want to they wanna get that credibility. And every corner you turn, you go to the gym, you got to be careful to go get a basketball because they'll be waiting for you in the, oh. in the basketball room. So it was just really it, all it, it, bad. It was rough, man. It was rough. Well, thank God. You said you're mm. here, right? I got jumped one time and uh, it broke my rib. <gasps> That was the most painful beating I've ever had. You know, all that saying is, uh, um, it only hurts for a while. That's a lie. It hurts for about a couple of weeks. Eh? Probably months, <laughs> low-key, yeah, you know? You know? And, but, through, uh, and through all these four, your four years, um, did you ever have any visits? Um, my mom, uh, she would come once a month. And uh, So regardless of you guys' relationship, she, was, she would do her best to be there. Well, she got married through the years. She got married uh, six times. Five to six times, and she had many, many boyfriends. Hey, you got to if it, they're not, hey, if they don't, we're going to kick them no, fools out. Kick them to the curb. That's right. That's right. <laughs> now you understand, but, though, huh? <laughs> but the last one, uh, Lee Silva, he passed away already, but he was a good Christian man, and uh, he would push her to come visit me. He, will, so, he, he helped her. Yeah. And uh, I had a pretty good relationship with him, you know. He didn't show me too much love, but he, he at least he respected me, you know. Mm -hmm. And I respected him because he... Um, he had a good work ethic, and uh, he just talked to me straight up, you know. Yeah. But yeah, they'd visit once a month. Well, that's, well that was yeah. nice. Did you have uh, pen pals, like girls? Uh, you know what? I was. Uh, it was kind of different back then because there was no internet, no phones, and stuff like that. 
Uh, I used to write a homegirl, a couple of homegirls, mm-hmm. but that was it. Nothing mm-hmm. like, yeah. yeah. Nothing like a love story nah. on paper no. or anything like that. No. Not while you were in YA, at nah. least, right? Because yeah. you just right. did a little smile right now. Like, a lot of things crossed your mind. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so you get out. You get yeah. out. How old were you when you got out? 18. 18 years old. And, you're, well, you, and those years, you know. You, I missed all my high school years, though. But you still got your diploma. Yeah. Good yeah, for you, right? I, I did in YTS. I got my diploma. So you got out, and uh, what did you do when you got out? Because now it's probably like the 80s or something? 1981. I wasn't even born yet. I was born I, in 82. Man, I am old. Then. No, but you know what? You look so young. You look good. My, my wife makes me put lotion on him. That's <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, it's what it is. You know, no, yeah. honestly, you look you look young. Obviously, tampoco hay cuarenton or whatever. You I, know? My, <laughs> my mom my mom lived to 91 and my, my real dad, he's 92. So wow. I, I guess I got those genes, you know? You know what? Some people just have the genes. Like, yeah. I think you have very good genes. I think I have very good genes as mm. well. Like... I don't feel like try I'm... To, try to exercise every day. You, you know? got you have to. You yeah. know, you got to watch what you eat. You know, yeah, exactly. all of that stuff. Okay, so you get out, you're 18, you're looking, you're feeling good. Yeah. Because I'm sure you thought you were the man. Oh, I, I thought I was the, the stuff, you know what I mean? <laughs> Everything was just going sweet, you know, just partying, gang banging, and everything was working out my way. And... Uh, Three months later, man, boom. I'm oh, so back you only in. lasted three months? Three months. And, I went and you prison. always look dressed like sharp and uh, nice. Always got to be on your game. That's yes. the way my wife has me now. You, always, you look good. You always got to look good, you know? Yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. But uh, I got out, and three months later, I was back in already. And I went, what uh, did you get? For a robbery. Oh, so you're. That's a funny story. Go tell us about and this I, robbery. And this just goes to show that I'm not trying to proclaim to be a killer or some. Some, I was doing robberies, but the robbery that I got caught for was a little embarrassing. <laughs> it's so, always like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, I was just doing robberies. Me and the homeboy were doing robberies. We had a thing, you know, you don't rob uh, the Asian markets, you know, because they'll shoot you. Anyways, uh, unfortunately, I ain't going to say his name. He did a robbery at an Asian market, and the, the guy killed him. Uh, but anyways... So one night I'm I'm walking home from a party. I stop at Derwiner Schnitzel's. Mm-hmm. And here's the funny, embarrassing part. And uh, you know I, I'm eating. It's about one in the morning. I say, you know what? I walked up to the front and I say, you know, give me your money. So the girl gives me the money. And I walk home. Like nothing. Like nothing. The next day, that was a Friday. The next day, me and a homeboy are out just running a muck, and we stop. Again, at the Wiener Schnitzels, the same one. So we're there eating, and the dudes from Puente come by. And there's like four or five of them in a the car. They pull over, and we start fighting. As we're fighting, uh, the cops pull up. They have us all on the floor, and the girl comes out and said, Hey, that guy robbed me yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so um, I end up getting, uh, I think it was three years for that. And... Uh, Guys in there used to clown me. Oh, was weenie this, bandit. And you went, <laughs> wait, here's the German bandit. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was a little embarrassing, but hey, it's part of your career, you know? Of course. Yeah. And now, you know, you could laugh at it, like, you yeah. know? I'm sure you do. All the robberies I did, I, I, I got caught for that they, one. Well, at least it was a small one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're 18, you get caught for this, you go to the county. Yeah. And this is your first time going to LA County. Yes. So it's, totally different from what you're used to because you're not with fighting your enemies anymore tell me well, about this experience back in 81 uh, they were still gangbanging in the county oh well tell us i mean we don't know how it was a lot of us you know a lot we have a lot of young watchers as well yeah. so it's definitely well, back different. then it, it was still uh i don't know how to put it i i won't talk about politics no definitely but, not Two months prior to that, my homeboy, Big Loco, who's been jailing his whole life, no, kind of notorious already in the joint, had a name. And and this is like in the 70s, so this is a long time no, ago. No, this is 1981. Oh, I it's mean. 1981. Yeah, it's still a long time ago. And uh, anyways, his little brother, Little Loco, who was in there for a murder, um, uh, was just running amok in the, just county. in the county, making a lot of enemies, not to mention the enemies we already had which are deep in there. And uh, 
he was just running amok, running amok. He calls my homeboy, his older brother, Big Loco, and, um, hey, you know, I'm getting jumped in here and all this. Big Loco, who's just been jailing his whole life, purposely socks up a sheriff to get busted. Uh, to make a long story short, he goes in there and takes care of business in the county. And uh, he took care of business with the wrong people. They stabbed him 62 times oh, wow. coming down uh, the tier in 3200. And now Bassett was notorious for that in, in that particular incident, how he crossed the line and disrespected some people he shouldn't have done. Mm -hmm. He knew better, but because for the love of his brother. So even though Bassett was notorious, Loco still went down with a good name. But man, what a foolish thing to do to cross those people. Yes. So here comes me two months later in the county. So I don't know where I stand. And this is your first time, so it's yeah, completely yeah. different. How yeah. did how did you feel when you were walking so, in? You know, I'll be honest. I was scared. I was scared. I was like, "What's gonna happen? You know, is this gonna backfire on me?" And sure, because obviously you heard word out here what was yeah. happening. And then the haters of my body were like, "Hey, you guys better be cool. You guys, you guys might have a green light." You know, and, yeah. And I'm sure the fans are putting it all together now. And um, and, uh, you know, I got in there and thank God there was no, uh, nothing on us. That was a personal, personal issue. Shit, and, and, yeah. yeah. But, uh, so that was a little nerve wracking, you know, that was a little nerve wracking. But was it thank harder God, for you to adjust to that place than where you were coming from? Because you were just out for three months. Well, YA was different. Yeah. And the county now, now you've pretty much reached the, the big boys, you know, and, and there's a little bit more, uh, discipline you know like hey don't do this like more don't rules do that. you got to follow within more you rules, guys yeah yeah but there was still a lot of gang banging in there mm. still a lot of gang banging you know the 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 thing was is when you get to the joint you don't gang bang okay so i was like well when am i gonna get there shoot how long we, were you in the county for your first time um, i think it was only like five six months oh it was quick yeah i just because i had all the witnesses against me what was i gonna if you fight it and lose you they yeah. give you the max you no know? yeah for sure for so, sure so I just uh, pleaded guilty and, and end up end up going to the joint. But at the same time, I found out my first wife was pregnant of my son, you know. So you got married at 18? I didn't get married. She just, you know. She just got she pregnant. She was a girlfriend, yeah. That you, within those three months? Yeah, yeah. And um, did you find out she was pregnant when you got busted? Yes. She went to go visit you? Yes. How were the visits before? Like, just was it easier to get in? Like, things like oh, that? Oh, yeah. As far as I know, I, you just gave them an ID and they let you in, you know? Yeah. They let you in. How did you feel when she told you that you were having a baby and... I didn't feel nothing. Really? Right? You were just like, yeah. fuck. Ah. You know, you're, you're young, 18 years old. It's like, all right, you know? So, but I, I thank God my, my oldest son is a... All my boys are good. And my thank daughters God. too. You know, I've been blessed. Yeah. And and those years, what, 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 kind of, what did you guys wear in the county jail? Do you have a county all blue blues. still? All still blues. blues? Right here. This stuff right here, yeah, blues. Yeah, but your status gave you the good blues. <laughs> yeah, I had good blues. you had nice, clean, That's right. sharp That's ones. Right. That's right. Yep. I look at you, super sharp. Yeah. So, anyways, we went to. I ended up going to the to the uh, from the county. I went to uh, Chino Reception Center, and then from there I went to uh, Soledad, and then from Soledad to Tatchby, I got parole from Tatchby. So, um, tell me, what was um. How long were you in, at uh, reception for? You said uh, Chino, because um, everybody used to go to Chino before, you said, yeah. right? I think I was there like nine, six, nine months. And yeah. what would you say was the craziest thing you saw? Um, there was really Like, even no, with the guards, like, how were the guards? The guards were cool. They were very respectful, you know? They were very, if you give them, back then, you give them respect, they'll give you respect. But what I had to adjust to is, is seeing enemies and, and not um, taking off, yeah, you know, getting off on them, you know. Because again, I, I'm not saying I, I was the best fighter because of my boxing. I was very confident, and in YA that was just automatic. You got to jam them first, you know. My older brothers always told me you always attack first. You never, never wait. You know yeah. What I mean? So I, I ran into a, a, well, I could say his name Pacón from Puente, and he was a notorious shooter in in Puente, and. Um, I don't know how it was set up, but 
I went back to my cell, and who's in my cell was <gasps> Du Pacon. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. How did that, you're like, oh, how did that make you feel? I, I just told him right away. I go, what's up, man? Eh? You know, I'm from Basse Grande. And I told him, what's up, man? Eh? He just goes, hey, you know what? Uh, things happen in the county, and apparently he got, he got touched up by one of my other homeboys, you know? Oh. So I told him, well, I'm here to represent, you know, what's up? He said, hey, it's cool. And I said, it's cool. So You guys were cool. We we're, you know, mutual respect, I guess. Nothing you know? crazy. Yeah. Which is good. And, and then it does the, make your life a little more. Yeah, but you, you still got to be through shot because, you know. But the main guy that was running the uh, the tier, he just said, hey, none of that here. You know what I mean? But it, that was after the fact that we had talked already, mm -hmm. you know. But it just made me feel uneasy. He was in my cell, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The righteous enemy in my cell. But it, it, went, it went, you know, everything went cool. Where my problem started is. I ended up going to, I got, we got, you know, you get sent to where you're going to get sent. And they sent me to Chino Men's Prison. Everything was cool there. Uh, my celly little man from my neighborhood left some heroin under his pillow. Just he, like nothing. Well, he was, he, he was going to like, get, get down or something, you know. Anyways, our cell got raided. So he was going to get paroled like in a month. And I still had a three year, a four year sentence. So I just told the man, you know what? Um, it's mine, you know, so he could go home. Anyways, they sent me to the White Elephant, Chino East. As I'm in the... What is a White Elephant? That's the way we used to call it back then. Okay. I, I don't know why they called it that. It was just but, sort of the name. Um, yeah, that, that's what everybody called it, the White Elephant. And uh, so they ended up sending me to Solidad from there. I, I got my paperwork, you're going to Solidad. My points went up. Because and, of the heroin. Because of the heroin. And here, here where the problem started. Uh, without saying names, this Crazy. guy was a big shot. He was a trustee. He used to sweep the the uh -huh. tier, and uh, you know the regular doors with the little windows. He walks up to me and he tells me, "Hey, Popeye, when you get to Solid Dad, you make sure you tell so and so another big shot. This guy right here, he points to him right directly across from us that he's no good." Now, I want to address this because I did another podcast and everybody goes, oh, you got used. You didn't ask for paperwork. When you're 18 and you're giving orders, you don't ask questions. If anything, the stupid young me was proud that I even got asked, told. Yes. told. Yes. In all reality, they told you. But and when you're 18, you, oh, man, they asked me, you know. Mm -hmm. So when he told me you go over there and tell so-and-so, which was a big shot, this guy's no good. I, yeah, no problem. And it's funny because as he's telling me that, he, the guy's literally looking through his window looking at us. And he could hear us. Oh, he could well, hear yeah, us. Yeah, he's telling him on purpose. Yeah, and he's, he's telling me this guy's no good. I didn't ask questions. I said, all right. The, where the problem started is he went there on a Monday, the guy that was no good, and I went there on a Wednesday. <gasps> so when I get off the bus Wednesday, I, I got my, my, uh, my bedroll. They tell me where I'm going. So I walk out to the yard, and who do I see first is this guy. He he's switched with, it around. He's with um, like six, seven dudes. And uh, after figuring out what happened, he, um, they apparently told him, you better hit this dude before he goes and tells on you, you know, tells the main people that you're no good. Oh, so he still had his back. Yeah. Well, his people had his back. Okay, okay. His people. I, I never knew what... What issues were with them? It might have been political, and I'm thinking it was political because he, he still had backup from his people. Mm -hmm. Because if it was a rat or something like that, they wouldn't be that way. They wouldn't be that of way. Of course. But uh, I still was told to tell this. And anyways, this dude runs up and, and stabs me, man, <gasps> in the neck. Oh my with goodness! A welding rod, and then he, then when I went to defend myself, he got me in the elbow. I was like. What the heck is You're literally doing? getting off the bus. Literally, I've only been off the bus like maybe an hour, an hour and a wow. half. And he hits me. So, you know, the, he after he hits me, he takes off running, you know. He takes yeah. off his people, cover for him. Anyways, uh, Patchy from Belinda Flats, right here in San Gabriel, he walks up to me and goes, what's up, man? You know, why'd you get hit? You know, what, what's up, man? You got smut on you? And he tells me real aggressive. You know, I go, hey, I told him, I gave him the rundown. I go, I ain't got no smut. I'm here to tell so-and-so that this guy's no good. So he takes me over there. In the meantime, my neck's swelling up like a 
<gasps> you know what I mean? And the cops didn't know yet? No, nah, nobody's, you know, obviously nobody's seen, you know. Oh, wow. So I go tell, I go tell this dude, hey, man, so-and-so from Chino, he wasn't from Chino, he was in Chino prison, told me to tell you this vato's no good, eh? You know, that's it. That's it. And he didn't even ask me what are the details. He just said, "All right." He believed. He trusted the word that it came yeah. from. Yeah. And um. And he goes, "What do you want to do?" I go, "I want to get down with this dude." Eh? You know. So, anyways, the bell rang. We had to go to our tears through the night. I'm just my neck wouldn't stop bleeding. <gasps> and you I didn't mean, tell anybody yet. No, but but some African American that worked in the hospital, I don't know how the word got to him. He brought a technic shot and a bunch of cleaning stuff. And through the night, the other Southerners, you know, helped me and cleaned me up. And But uh, they straight out told me, if you don't hit this dude in the morning, we're going to hit you, you know. I took that as disrespect, you know. I go, first of all, don't talk to me like that. I ain't going to lock it up, you know. And, and it didn't cross my mind to lock it up. I, I wanted to it's get revenge, you know. It's super scary to be in those situations, But huh? I was, I was... Um, uh, you know, because you get that street credibility of being a gangster in and out of jail. I just, the only thing that crossed my mind is if I kill this dude and get caught, I'm never getting out, you mm -hmm. know? And my brother was already doing life, you know? But anyways, in, come morning, they give me a big old bone crusher, man. This thing was like a sword, you know? And uh, I went out to the yard and this fool's actually waiting for me. You know what I mean? I, I got, I, I take my hat off to him, you know? Yeah. But, um. Thank God I got away with it, and I did, I, you know, I had the last laugh, you know. Thank, Thank God, God I didn't take his life, though. I didn't take his life, but he had to go to the hospital. I didn't. Yeah, you, yeah. you, you know, you, you didn't prove, I mean, it's not about proving yourself, but you did what well, you no, had to do. Well, in reality, yes, it was. You to had to prove yourself. To, to defend yourself. Yes. So that you could stay standing, and yes. you're, you're able to do your time, not in peace, because it's obviously never in peace, but at least, like, okay. Well, I mean, after I did that, I stood in my cell for at least a week to try to heal up. But when I came out, it was like I arrived, you know. I seen the respect I got on the yard, and it really just lit a, a fire under my butt. That clout. You know? It's like, like the hey, clout. Like I the made clout it, now. Know, I, I hope my brother heard about it, and I hope the homeboys hear about it. You know, I'm 18 years old, you know. I'm thinking I'm God's gift to the world, you know. <laughs> but um, How do you say it? But as time went on, I could see that. It, it was just a bunch of lions and yeah. we're just looking for a, a reason to hit each other, you know? Yeah. It's just, you know, that, and that's why I don't want to glorify that type of lifestyle. Well, no, but, no, we, we don't. But, you know, but it's in just... reality, you know, in reality, you could be good today and gone no, tomorrow. you won't be, that's right. Your name that's comes right. on the list for whatever reason it might be and, and you'll get hit. Man. Yeah. I don't care how, you could be four foot 11 and they'll still send five guys to hit you, you know? Yeah. It, it that's why I say it. it's it's an ugly world in there. It is. It is. I really don't know how much is it, it's now the way it is now, but back then that's the way it was. I mean, I'm know? sure it's still ugly. It's, I'm sure it's still ugly. Yeah. You know that world in there. It's, it's. I mean, it's not meant to be a happy place. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's not meant to be a happy place, and um, obviously, I feel like you know, there's some people that do need to be in there, and there's some that are not. Oh, it's funny you say that because uh, through the years I was in there, you meet some people. You know, some homies are like, damn, I'm glad he's in here. He's not out right there. It's man. not safe for fools, people man. out here. Yeah, yeah. Some and fools it's like no there. disrespect towards anybody ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but there is some people that are not okay to be out here. Yeah, yeah. It's not safe for people, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, man. But, okay, so how long? You did your three years. Yeah. And you got out. There's no parole or any of that. No, I had Also, oh, there was parole. Yeah, a one-year parole. In the 80s, there was parole. Yeah. Okay. There was parole. And back then, uh, you, you like YA, you had, you had to go to parole board. But mm -hmm. in prison, they just give you a, a parole date. Ah. Yeah. But I, my day got extended. My day got extended twice from messing up. Ah. Another time we got into it with the, the guys from the north. Okay. And I ended up going to the hole for that. How long did you do in the hole? Um, just 30 days. Okay, so it wasn't like and, nothing crazy. And, and here's another funny story. They gave me a 30-day stay in the hole. And I was there like 35 days. <laughs> and I was like telling the sergeant, hey, man, Give me you up. guys forgive, man? Get me out of here. And everybody's clowning me. Hey, calm down, Popeye. But yet, my brother did 12 years in Pelican Bay in the hole. And I'm complaining about 35 days. days uh -huh. You know what I mean? It was just, um, you know, it, 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 it's just ugly how 
some of those, I don't even know how some of those guys could sit in the hole Ay, those, those many years, you know what I mean? I know. Drive you crazy. Honestly, honestly, you know. And, and the crazy part about being in the hole, well, even there, uh, this was in Tatchby, um, your enemies would walk the tier. you get one hour on the tier, and they, we would literally be talking to each other. But yet, but yet knowing if the cell opens, I, I got to attack you. It's crazy, right? Or he's going to attack me. But we're sitting there talking about boxing, about football. You know, that's, just, that's, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it amaz- it, it, it's intense. Yeah, it's intense because like, this guy's not so bad. He's a cool dude. But if the gate opens, I got to hit him, you know, and vice versa, you know? Yeah. That's super sad, super scary. But unfortunately, it's how it is. And yeah. obviously, we, I mean, that's not our, our, place to like say or change or anything yeah. like it's not nothing to do that's with right. us you know uh we're just here sharing right. our experiences of how, what we went through with you know you yourself you know yeah so you got out yeah wait hold on did you did they take you did they take your baby to go see you when he was born uh, yeah yeah when i finally seen my son and, and and honestly that's when i really thought do i want this for my boy you know and um even though I didn't change, you know, I, I didn't want that for my son. You know? Yeah. I don't feel like anybody should want that for their children. They should want, but you'd be surprised. No. Man. There's, there's some movies about- out there that they got. Another quick story. There was two brothers from Maravilla. You guys will know who they are. This is in the 80s. The Cuates. That's all I say, the Cuates. They were known by different names, but they were twins. They had life without. They were stone killers, man. They were my age, 18, 19 years old. I noticed that their father was on the yard with them. with them, but they didn't talk to him. And one day I just, you know, we're just cutting it up. And I told, I asked them, I go, hey, well, I noticed you don't talk to your jefe. What's up, eh? And they said, F that vato, eh? You know what? He's the one that made us like this. We're never going home and that fool's going home, you know? And you know what? I, I feel um, that that... That kind of lifestyle before was like a thing. Yeah. Like it was like a generation thing. Like, you know, that's it was a thing. Yeah. And I don't think I see that as much. Well, now. yeah, there was obviously Thank more God. to it. Thank know? God. Yeah. Because it was like a thing, you know, if this is our family, this is our it's just who we are, this is yeah. who we have to represent. And um it's not okay <laughs> yeah. for your kids. Like that's something I would never want my kids. Obviously, that fool wanted to be with we're gonna you know, you're gonna be from here or you ain't gonna be from nowhere. Yeah. Type of thing. You get what I'm saying? And it was yeah. like more common before. Yeah. Now I feel like it's it's not. And and those boys, like what you said, I mean, obviously they're grown grown men now. And it's like, um, they probably didn't want to be that way. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah. But their dad made them because it was like different before. I was and, so- and they took it to the extreme because they were obviously not getting out, you know. But yeah. Yeah, and that stuck in my mind, you know. Do I want my son to do this, you know? And God is good, man. He's a. That's right. My son's a two tour in Iraq, first war, 82nd Airborne Infantry, and uh, he's a LAPD now. Wow. Only 16 years, you know? Wow. He's a good boy, man. And my, I have another son that's in the military, too, right now. Wow. So, yeah. Everybody, so far, everybody's turned out right. I have my <laughs> youngest son, he's a, a professional fighter as well. So. Wow. And he's going to be a daddy soon. So, yeah, everything's good. I got two, Thank God. two Thank daughters. God. You, know? you know, sometimes I feel like we as parents have to go through what we went through to save our kids, regardless yeah. of what we went through. And, and we went through because those are our choices. I wanted to live the yeah. life I want to live because I wanted it. So I've always wanted to live that way, you know. But as you grow, I feel like, you know, that was my path to save my kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So, OK, so you get out three years later. What happens then? Um, I'm just the same. Still, you went back. Yeah, I went back one more time on a violation. Oh, so you just got violated? You didn't catch a new case? No, I didn't catch it. Thank God, you know. Yes. But but I was still running amok out there, you know, doing my thing, and you know, I was very. Um, I'm not proud of it now. I was very. I, I was abusive to my first wife, unfaithful, and finally, um, you know, as time and, and through this time, I was trying to fight. I wanted to fight as a Yeah, fighter. I was going to ask you, how did you, how did you, after you got out from the violation is when you yeah. actually started the, your, the fighting career? Well, I've always been in the boxing gym. I, that's always been my thing is fighting, boxing. So I would go to South Omani and I couldn't get my weight down to where Ben Lira wanted it. 
So it, it just, I was just running amok. Plus, I was working. I've always been a worker, thank God. You, you know? weren't a drug user. I, I was a heavy drug user. Ah, okay. I didn't, I, I didn't. I did uh, a lot of cocaine and speed. Oh. That was my thing, cocaine and speed. To me, I... I never mess with the cools. Or the, you know, to me, you always got to be on your game. You know? yeah, well, at least I was you a, thought you got to be on your toes all yeah, pumped up. <laughs> I don't want to get socked up all cooled out, you know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that was my thing, all speed cool, and man. coke. And um, I did that for 26 years, pretty much every day, man. Even when I was training to oh, fight, wow. you know? Yeah. It's funny to hear, like you say, um, all cooled out. Because it's like you don't hear that anymore. You know? Yeah, that's right, huh? Like, Do they even have that anymore? I don't, I mean, I don't think so. Like, yeah. I didn't even, I mean, I, I did frios, like, yeah. who's frios, you know, yeah. like, in the, and that was like a 98. Yeah, yeah. You know, like. Yeah, they still had it then. Yeah. They still had it. Like, you know, the older, the older homies were all frioed out, like, you know. Yeah. So for you I was just, afraid to do that, man, because I was afraid <laughs> that somebody's going to sock me up or beat me down or get killed, you know? Yeah, but it's, I, you know, it just kind of brought memories yeah. of, like, the whole word. Like, wow, that feels all cooled down. Like, I didn't, yeah. it's been so long. Cool. It's crazy. So you got out, you, your violation, you never went back, thank God. Yeah. And you, wh how did, what did you start doing? Well, you were was, always uh, in the boxing thing, but. Yeah, I was just training the kids, but I was still doing my thing in the street and, uh, you know, one day I just said, uh, I'm going to try to be a boxing referee, you know. And I, I tried in the amateurs. And, you know, this is where I think God had a, had a plan for me because they wouldn't let me referee. They wouldn't let me referee. And uh, I just sat on the side in a referee uniform for five years. It was my fault. Partly and you're my on fault. drugs this whole time still. And that's well, why. Uh, yeah. Funny, funny story. Uh, uh, the lady that was in charge, Melody, she's a good lady. She passed away already. Melody was the one that would allow us to referee or not. Anyways, I'm at a show. I go to the restroom to go do a linea real quick. As I come out, she sees me and she just looks at me. And I, you know, I just walk past her. I, I go by and one of the fish goes, Ray, you got a ring around your nose, bro. I'm like, oh my God. You know, I just thought to myself, that's why she looked at me, you know? <laughs> and I, you know, it was my own fault. Obviously. You know? But again, God had a plan, you know, I kept doing my thing, got a divorce. Ugly divorce, you know, and, and it, 99 percent of that divorce was my fault, you know. And uh, I had three kids with with um, with her, a boy and two girls. And this is the mother of your first son. Yes. Okay. Yes, and then um, and then uh, I met my second wife at Victory Outreach. She grew up in my neighborhood, though. Arlene, my wife. Oh, and, you're still uh, with your wife. Yes. Your second. Twenty six years now. Shout out to Arlene. Yeah, that's right, my baby doll, man. She's my, my road dog. <laughs> I know, that's you know what I mean? right. She keeps seeing. I mean, believe me, we bump heads like crazy, but I love her to death, man. She really keeps me, you know, set. Uh, she's a registered nurse and beautiful woman and um, props to her, you know. But I met her. Anyways, I, I, I asked Ben Lira, who's really big in the boxing world. I said, you know what, I want to be a, a referee, you know. They're not letting me referee. And he goes, you know what? I'll call some people and see if you can get into the pros, which really never, I mean, I, I wouldn't say they were haters, but some of the homeboys like, come on, homies, they're not going to let you referee, you know, ex-con, home, the way you look. You know what? I just like, I'm going to try it, bro. I got to try it at least. I, I can. I've always been, you know, it, it's like the fighting in YA. The guy might be bigger. I'm going to fight. No matter gonna, what. I got to do it. You That's know? right. My brother's always taught me. You know, you got to do it. No matter if you it. get beat up. No matter you get beat it's, it's the point. And this is why I say, it wasn't that I was such a good fighter. It's just my willingness to that's fight. That's right. And that's what I found out later. Because at first I thought I was a good fighter, but no. After, <laughs> after right, Danny. Brother, you're all, you're, I'm a better referee. <laughs> at, at, after Danny put hands on me, I go, I guess I'm not that good. Man. You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> That's funny. Go, you know, getting, I, I, I went, did a little couple of weeks in the county for little stupid stuff, you know. It didn't but, feel the same anymore, though, right? No, nah, it didn't feel the same, you know? Like it wasn't for you I had you more anymore. responsibility, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I, that credibility in the street just, it just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it no more, you know? And then uh, I was still doing speed, doing still doing speed. That's what kept you going back, because it's the behavior that causes, yeah. the drug behavior is what causes you to do the dumb things. And, and, and how do they say you work more hours to buy more speed? 
to do more speed, to work more hours. Mm -hmm. and it's just a non evolving, know. you know? It's just so drainful. Yeah. I don't wish that feeling upon anybody. Yeah. But, but at the time, I actually thought to myself, I can't see my life without doing drugs. You know, it's like, I, I got, you know, I, I work, I bought a home already, had two cars, you know. And you're still on speed. And I'm still on speed, like, you know. I understand but, what you mean. But uh, seeing homeboys die from it. And, and you know what? I'm 60 years old now. I mean, I, I still, even though I work out every day, who's to say next week things don't happen in my body? You know, I've seen homeboys else. just go through great cirrhosis of the liver and stuff, you know? Yeah, especially because of all the stuff we put ourselves through yeah. while, our, while we're younger, yeah. you know? I mean, with all the drug use, shoot, I go to sleep at 7 p.m. now and wake up at 3 like nothing, you know? Like, well, where's everybody at, you know? Like, bro, everybody just fell you know asleep. I mean? <laughs> but now I do it sober, though. God is good. You know? I can't stay up. I cannot stay up unless I'm out. Oh, okay. Like, if I'm home and the family's there, like, oh, where's, where's Christina? Because yeah. everybody, oh, you la pinche negra? Like, my mom, you know? Yeah. Oh, she's asleep already. She's like, I'm, super, yeah. yeah, like, I'm like a super... Super viejita vibes. I, I love it. You know, honestly, yeah. like, I like it. I like yeah. to have my routine. And I'm just, I feel like um, prison did give me that routine. Yeah. And I kept that. And it's what's kept me going and kept me, just that morning routine is yeah. what's kept me going and in my right path. And, and I had always heard in, in the military, they tell them routine keeps you safe. Routine keeps you on your toes, you know. When you break that routine, that's where things will mess up. You know, mm -hmm. my wife hates it that I do that, but you know, I'm at least now when I get up at three, it's because naturally before I'd be waking up at three because I couldn't go to sleep. You know, <laughs> but she used to wake up and say, "Get your butt in bed, man. Go to sleep." You know, or I'd be trying to sweep the garage at two in the morning. She's you know? dealt with a lot. Oh, Shout out yeah, to your yeah. wife. But moving ahead, this is where my life changed, though. Tell us. Um, I, I kept doing the speed, kept doing the speed, and and uh, my wife finally just told me, you know what, if you don't stop this, I'm going to leave you, you know? And your boys, you know, I, now I have three sons with her. So now you have you have six kids now. Yes. So now I have seven. Uh, there's another another boy I had. That's a whole other story. I'll deal with that later. But <laughs> I, I have them, though. I'm raising them. And... Uh, so there's seven of us there, and she goes, you know, I'm going to take the boys and leave. And I just figured she was throwing Talking wolf poop. tickets, you mm -hmm. know. One Friday I came home. I was 45 years old. Wow, you were I was old. already a professional referee, you know. So I, I already jumped that hurdle and, uh, you know, pretty excited about it. And uh, she just said, you know, if you don't stop, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you. And Friday came when I got off of work. I came home wired like I always did. And sure enough, man, she got the boys got in the car and left. Oh, your body is so annoying to her. So, like, that was like five in the afternoon. I work graveyard. I always work graveyard. And uh, That was your excuse to stay up, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One in the morning, I just got on my knees and I said, you know what, God? You give me my wife and my kids back and I, I give you everything. I'll, I'll start serving you. And as God is my witness, mind you, 26 years of doing speed every day, I've never touched it since that day. Because when Never. you want to do something, it... Well, I, I feel it's it's the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, God, for sure, you know? God, for sure. That was God because, I mean, did I go through withdrawals? Yeah. Did I did I want it? Did I crave it? Yeah, but I kept my word. And, and I'm not saying I'm a perfect Christian, you know. There's no perfect Christian on earth, but I stuck to my word. And, and you know what? She came back, like, a not even weeks later, just a couple of days later, she came back and... We've been going forward now together as Christians, you know. And I'm a Christian now. I, I go to Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley, right here in Chino Valley. And you know what? Again, I'm not a perfect Christian. I still have my bad days. I mean, but, but as far is, as drugs, there's no such thing. I've never, I've never touched drugs you. since then. And that's what matters. And that's what makes yeah. your life go. Yeah. Because you're doing the right thing. Yeah. But apparently it was bad because even my daughters now who, who are older, they say, man, dad, when you didn't have it, you... Fucking disaster. Yeah. Was, oh, que horror. Man, they said I'd have a bad mood for days, you know? Yeah, because they remember. They, yeah. and, and especially because you're I already... Know, I didn't notice it. You were already 45 years old. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, you're a grown-ass mm. man. That's right. That's right. But God is good. You know, Amen. I've been... Uh, as far as refereeing, I've been all over the world. Nice. Get paid for it. I've done numerous title fights. 
been in a couple of movies, you know. So, you know, I, my life's, you know, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, you know. God, good for you. And um, here I am today, you know, good on your you. show. Thank yes, you. Yes, on Indicted Thank TV, you. telling That's us right. your right. prison experience and, you know, yeah. where you're at now and stuff like that. Yep. <clears throat> well, I do appreciate you coming. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would want to share? Uh, I have my podcast. Can I, can I say yes, that? Yes, of course. You guys ever want to listen to a referee's perspective? Uh, and, and, and I'm venturing out like you. I'm going to do a bunch of other stuff. Um, you go on, on YouTube, Third Man in the Ring. One word, Third Man in the Ring, and, and subscribe, you know? That's my podcast. and uh, we're, we're, It's really about boxing and MMA, but we're venturing out to talk about other stuff as well, you know? Yeah, of course. But yeah. And I, I love your show. Thank you. I love your show. Thank I you. I watch it all the time. I've yes. seen all your guests. i seen you got Jaws from San, San Fernando. Yes. That. That was a they, good one. they don't know that yet. They don't know that I, yet. i seen the photo, though. On the, oh, yeah. On he your, posted it. Yeah, yeah they posted you, it. Oh, was that him that posted it? No, it was his page. He okay. has his page. Uh, okay. he doesn't, he's not the one that runs it, but he does his avid. Yeah. He has his own page. Okay. Check out her page as well, guys. <laughs> Yeah, they're obviously watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, again, thank you for coming on my channel thank you for on Indicted TV. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Of course. You guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram.